the specific tests that you look for to diagnose it is there's blood tests and and actually it's it's fairly well laid out um, the first one is a serologic test where they actually will look for the antibodies um, for the Lyme infection so that it, when you're infected with not just with Lyme disease but with anything you produce antibodies against that particular infection and the the um, antibodies uh, are specific for that infection. So in other words, um, antibodies, for instance, for measles are not going to have anything to do with antibodies for Lyme disease. So if we can pick up antibodies that are specific for Lyme disease, then it means that you've at very least been exposed to that infection. So that test is, is the one that we need to start with. Um, if that comes up positive, there are it, it, it's what we call a sensitive test. So occasionally we'll have somebody who tests positive that doesn't have it, who really wasn't infected with Lyme disease. They maybe had something else that made it look uh, like it was Lyme disease. Uh, so they do something called a Western blot test, which is a, not to get into too much of the technique of it, but it, it's a more specific test. If that comes up positive, then that's a, a fair certainty that at very least that person was exposed. Now the other side of that coin is a positive test does not always prove that somebody has Lyme disease. It proves that they were infected at some point. But if somebody were infected, say, 10 years ago, and maybe they got over it, or maybe they got mildly ill and got over it, or whatever, they may not, the, Ill, the, sim the symptoms they're having today may be from something else. So, so it's not like doing the test if it's positive, oh, you've got Lyme disease. It's the other way around. If you have those symptoms and you do the test and they're negative, the test is negative, then those symptoms are probably not Lyme disease. The, the test doesn't prove that those symptoms are due to Lyme disease. Uh, so again, if you have a positive test uh, and you have symptoms, if the symptoms are nonspecific, um, then if possible, you have to delve in farther with history, uh, such as, again, did you have the rash? Were there other symptoms pre previously that might have been more specific for Lyme disease, um, such as, again, the rash, again, palpitations? Uh, did you have a flu-like illness, although everybody has one of those at one time or another, so that's kind of nonspecific in itself. Um, tick exposure, and then ultimately, you know, some people, you can't get any more specific than that, and, and with somebody like that, we often will treat them and to see if they respond. Uh, the trap that people fall into is uh, they may treat them and um, they don't respond, so they say, well, let's treat, oh, it didn't work, we treated you for four weeks, let's treat you for four weeks more and for four weeks more, and you see people come in who are getting treated for two years, three years at a time, some doctors making a lot of money some infusion companies making a lot of money the patient is just suffering <laughs> because they're getting treated for something they never really had in the first place and they can get um, the treatment is not is not without side effects the drugs have side effects uh, and uh, I have seen at least two cases of people who were being treated for Lyme disease that they didn't have who got very serious infections from the intravenous lines because they put an intravenous line in, you know, now they put it in the arm, they used to put it up here. Uh, but wherever they put it, if you have an intravenous line for a long period of time and use it every day, which is why you have it, the intention is to use it, every time you use it you run a small risk of infecting it. So no matter how scrupulously careful you are, it can get infected. I saw one woman come in who was being treated, I think it was about two years for Lyme disease she didn't have. She ended up getting bacterial meningitis with a, with a bacteria that almost never causes meningitis. It caused a serious bloodstream infection and so she didn't have Lyme disease infecting her brain any longer. She had this disease that, that came that close to killing her. She took months and months to rehabilitate from the meningitis. I saw another young woman who had a raging infection in her bloodstream with, I think it was four different bacteria because she had an infected intravenous line that she never needed in the first place. So, so there is a very serious danger out there and, and some people, as I said, are, are making themselves rich on this diagnosis. Uh, so. So there is a danger to treating. I mean, I don't have any problem treating somebody where it's suspected for a month, but if they don't get better after that, then, then, then you stop.